ever so optimistic about my own baking skills. <laughs> and welcome back to my channel and my kitchen. Today I am going a little bit into my cultural roots and making a Veranek Vielknotsny, also known as an Easter lamb cake. Now these cakes were really popular in the 40s and 50s for Eastern European families and there are a few other plots in Europe where these were seen every single year such as Italy. So this is the cake mold I picked up. I got it from Amazon and it is from Nordic. They have made it as close to the original vintage ones. I have seen vintage ones at op shops and scrapyards and garage sales. So you can still pick up an authentic one. And basically it is a full 3D lamb. But the thing that gets me is his face. I'm sorry, but its face is just hilarious. <laughs> now these would be served generally on Easter Sunday because it's a day you can have sweets. And they are generally quite cute. I have seen some questionable outcomes, but we're just gonna go with it and hope that it all comes out okay. Now I am using a recipe from the Polish housewife. I will link it down below so you can follow along. We are ready to start, so aprons up. Let's get started and hope for the best. For this cake, you need simple baking ingredients such as butter, sugar, eggs, flour, salt, baking powder and soda, buttermilk and some vanilla. Start by preheating your oven to 180 degrees. Then cream your butter and sugar. When you're happy, add one egg at a time, mixing well between eggs. It's now time to combine all your dry ingredients together. Start with flour, salt, baking powder and baking soda. Mix it all together well. Then add in your vanilla, oh, that's the last of that. And finally, add in your buttermilk. It's now time to get really close and personal with your lamb tins. Grease every single nook and cranny you can get into. When you're done, add a thin layer of flour. I basically shook this lamb like mad before spooning in my batter. Gently spoon in your batter. I used this giant toothpick that I found at my finger to make sure every single inch was filled. Don't forget to put in a little dowel, which is basically this kebab stick again, into the body, the neck, and the ears. This will stop it cracking in future and will make taking it out of the pan really easy. Don't overfill your lamb. Put the back on and wrap its ears in aluminium foil so they don't burn in the oven. I weighed it down with this large orange pot so it doesn't explode. One hour later. After an hour of baking, let it cool and pop it out of its little pan. Make sure it's sitting up when you cool it so it doesn't squash. A few moments later. It's completely up to you how you decorate your lamb. I started by making a glaze out of milk and powdered sugar. When I laid my lamb down, I poured the glaze over its face, let it set, and then it did it two more times to make sure it had a really smooth surface. Then, using just normal piping and a flower tip, I piped on some wool. It's completely up to you how you decide to decorate your lamb. I made sure to pipe the wool all around its face, trying to make it look as cute and round as possible. When I was happy, I got plain black icing and piped on eyes and nose and a little mouth. I tied on a cute ribbon, and to add a final flourish, I found some sugar roses in my baking drawer. I didn't want its feet to get cold, so I added some Easter grass. And I was done! Alrighty, so that is our Easter lamb cake done. It has taken me almost the entire day. I think it came out pretty cute. Sure, its face is questionable, and it looks a little bit... It's homemade. A bad way of describing something. She looks homemade. 
And that is all I have time for you guys today. I have loved testing out another vintage recipe and I think this is probably one of the ones that have turned out the best. If you'd like to keep up with all my vintage adventures, you can subscribe to the channel by clicking the little boxy thing down below or you can follow me on any of my socials, everything will be linked. As always, you can also find me on my blog. But until next week, Brian, stop scratching the furniture. Thank you. I will see you guys then. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.